Um, I will introduce Shamika and Joe um, once again, and always happy to. These two have both either served or are currently serving on the board of directors at the Spina Bifida of now New York State. Um, and we're so grateful for all of their personal and professional expertise. So today that's what they're bringing to the table for us. Um, Shamika is the community outreach coordinator for the Self-Advocacy Association of New York State. She is also the founder of Disability Empowerment Consulting, where she provides disability workshops on self-care, self-advocacy and disability awareness. In 2006, she won the title of Miss Wheelchair New York, and she has been the coordinator of the program since 2013. In 2017, she wrote her first children's book, Butterfly on Wheels, which you can find online if you are interested. She serves on the New York State Developmental Disabilities Planning Council, the Developmental Disability Advisory Council for the Office for People with Developmental Disabilities, and the New York State Human Rights Disability Committee. So welcome, Shamika. Joe. Where do I begin? Joe is a 50 year old born with spina bifida and hydrocephalus. He has worked at the Henry Viscardi School since 1993. He is the creator and head coach of the Henry Viscardi School wheelchair basketball program. He is the creator and coordinator of the Viscardi Ambassadors Disability Awareness Program and the Team Viscardi Bike Club. He is a board member at the Spina Bifida Association of New York State and an advocate with the Hydrocephalus Association. When it comes to ath athletics, Joe plays basketball, football, sled hockey, tennis, lacrosse, softball, and hand cycling. And he's also a certified scuba diver, skydiver, and surfer. Not only that, Joe is an actor, model, and voiceover <gasps> artist in many different films, and he can direct you to where to find them. But um, yes. Some of you may have seen him in various fashion shows, including the Runway of Dreams and the one hosted by the Spina Bifida Association chapters. So it is yeah. absolutely my pleasure. I am so excited to welcome these two, and I know you guys will get a lot of knowledge from what they have to share today. So without further ado, I kick it off to you, Shamika. All right. Well, thank you, Julia. Thank you, everybody, for being here. So I am going to talk about something that lots of people have a love-hate relationship with. And that is the term self-care. So that means a lot of things to a lot of people. But to me, it means finding the tools and the resources that work for you that help you be your best you. And whatever that means to you, not what it means to somebody else, not what other people think you should be, what you want to be and believe that you should be. So I'm going to talk to you about a lot of tools and a lot of resources and all of those don't, won't necessarily work for you. But the point is, is to find the things that do. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about, the previous speaker talked about vision right? And I like to talk about vision and intentions. Setting intentions for your life, for your day, and what that looks like. I'm a very visual person, and some of you may have uh, joined um, some of our uh, other previous workshops where I talked about vision boards. So I love vision boards, Again, it's just a tool. Uh, if it's not something that you uh, want to use, but I, when I have my goals and set my goals in order for me to focus on those things. Hey, I think I'm here. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, okay. Joan, were you talking to me? Me or somebody else? Okay. No, I was trying to get into the room and now I'm going to mute myself. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. So basically a vision board is a visual representation of your goals. That's what it is to me. So I personally, some people like to do old school vision boards where you're, um, you know, you have magazines and things like that. 
Um, I like to do, do digital vision boards um, where I use a program called Canva and that's C-A-N-V-A.com. There is a free version of that um, website or you can also do a paid subscription and you can use this particular program to do vision boards or lots of other things. So the other thing that I do as far as setting goals is I, instead of, you know, a lot of people, they have um, beginning of the year and my birthday happens to be New Year's Day. So when it's New Year's, right, we often do New Year's resolutions, right? I, I don't particularly like New Year's resolutions. So I use a method that I learned from somebody else called themes or words for the year. So I pick um, a theme and then I decide what activities go with that theme. So my theme for this year was listen and learn. So what, how can I be a better listener? How can I be a better student and a lifelong learner? So those were my focuses for this year for myself. And everything I did was around those themes. So those are important tools for me. The other things are moving your body. And again, this looks different from different for different people because everybody has different. Uh, but the key for me for movement is to find a way to move your body that you love. For me, that's dancing. I love dancing. And through the pandemic in the last few years, I have found lots of online uh, dance groups that I meet with throughout the week. And all of these things I can tell you more about um, after, because I know we only have a certain amount of time. You can reach out to me later, learn more about that. Um, so movement can mean anything, whether it's dancing for you, whether it's yoga, whether it's weightlifting. Um, so it's all important. And to go with your mind and moving your body, <clears throat> your mind how are you taking care of your mind what are you putting in your mind what are you reading what are you listening to um who are you listening to what are the words and the thoughts that are coming into your head being aware of what those are you know are your your thoughts always negative all the time do you have a lot of negative self-talk being aware of all of these things not making yourself bad or wrong or whatever it's be just being aware. What are you thinking about all the time? What, what are you thinking about throughout your day? Who are you listening to? Who are you hanging around? Um, and what are they saying to you? And do you believe what they're saying to you, whether it's negative or positive? So these are all, all things because everything, I believe everything is energy and people give off energy and you know, things give off energy. So we need to be aware of how we're spending our time, who we're and who we're spending our time with. These are all part of taking care of ourselves. And some of the things that we learned about today, right, of like screenings and importance of, you know, those things, you know, seeing the right doctors, advocating for ourselves. These are ways that we uh, take care of ourselves. So with taking care of yourself, and this, this one was a hard tool for me to learn about, and that's boundaries. Do we have boundaries in our lives, right? And boundaries are so important and learning how to say no to the things that we, that we don't want to do, that we're not comfortable with. And this is very, very tough especially if it's with people that we care about, right? Because we, everybody needs boundaries in their life. And those boundaries can be anything from who can call your house and at what time. That, that was like a big thing for me of like not answering the phone late at night, 
right? And having people call you at all hours of the night, right? Or turning off the television, right? That's another boundary, you know, being up all night, watching TV, you know? What are the boundaries that you need in your life that you may need to implement to help you be your best you? So those are, that's very important. And another thing that the, the last speaker talked about is decluttering, which can be so overwhelming, especially if you have, um, you know, executive functioning issues. For me, you know, another thing she mentioned was timers. So I, I find that I can do anything in 10 minutes, right? So what I do each day, I have a little decluttering, decluttering session. I set a timer for 10 minutes and I work on one thing. I don't try to clean the whole house from top to bottom because sometimes we do that, right? We'll like pull everything apart and then we'll get completely overwhelmed because there's too much to do. So I pick one thing, one thing to do for 10 minutes or one area to focus on for 10 minutes. And that works for me. Again, maybe you're the type that you know, once you start something, you have to, to finish it or whatever, but you have to figure out what works for you. Another thing that I um, do to take care of myself and take care of my mind and you know my thoughts is I put affirmations in my phone. So a lot of times we can set alarms on our phone but on my phone and probably other people's phones, you can actually type words. So when the alarms go off, it types, it flashes words across the screen. So what I usually do in the morning, like for my morning alarm, I say, it, it says, today is going to be a great day. So that is the first thought that I'm thinking when I get up in the morning is today is gonna to be a great day. And that's, and being intentional about making it a, a great day. What are, what are the things that I'm going to do that it is a great day? And also having those things, right? Cause sometimes things don't go exactly the way we plan, right? So what are those tools to help us when things don't go exactly as they're planned, right? Or we get stressed throughout the day. And one of those tools that I use is meditation. So those of you who know me, you know I, how I feel about meditation. And deep breathing. Just taking, just remembering throughout your day to take a deep breath. Maybe that's your self-care for, for the day, is just take a deep breath. And it makes a world of difference, it really does. So another thing that's, so, you know, we're all, we're all busy and we all have things to do and we all, and you know, maybe we're working or going to school or whatever. But another important part of taking care of ourselves is rest and play, right? We're not meant to work all the time or you know, study all the time or whatever. We have to make sure that we are taking time for rest and taking time to you know, connect with just ourselves. You know, every morning, everybody that knows me and that lives in my building knows the first 30 minutes of when I get up, don't call me, don't talk to me. That is that is my time to be with me, to read, to do whatever I want the first 30 minutes of the day. Have my tea. I love to have my tea in the morning. That's that's for me. So you have to find out what that what that is for you. And a long time, it that really it something I had to work on because for so long. I was afraid of being alone. I didn't want to have alone time because I didn't want to be alone with my thoughts and I didn't want to you know, think about being alone. 
But then I realized how important it was that time for really, you know, being with myself and, you know, whether it's journaling or whatever. Now, as far as journaling, again, that's another thing people have a love-hate relationship with, but a journaling practice that I do every day because I was having a lot of anxiety at night. So what I would do is I write my thoughts in a journal and I tear it up before I go to bed every day. And I say to myself, I like to ask myself questions. What is something that I need to release before I go to bed? And it, usually something comes into my head and I write that down and I rip it up and I get rid of it. And then I go to bed. You know, the previous speaker also talked about night routines. So that's part of my night routine is to do that journaling practice of getting rid of the thoughts that I don't want to carry into bed with me. The other thing that I like to do is we talk about, you know, foot checks and things like that, you know, for people with spina bifida. Another thing I started doing is giving myself foot massages. Again, different people feel differently about massage. Um, I find that it's a great way for me. You know, you don't necessarily have to go to a spa. Um, if, you, if you can afford that and you like that, you can go do that. But I give my own self foot massages every night. Um, so that's part of my self-care. So you find that, that thing for you again. And again, I have my tea at night. So those are things that that work for me. If they don't work for you, that's fine. You don't have to. So these are just certain things. I could go on and on and on about this topic. <laughs> um, and you can always reach out to me afterwards if we don't have time for uh, you know, questions here. I'm on Facebook, whatever. And Julia knows how to get a hold of me. But I know, I think I only had, um, we were supposed to do 15 minutes each. So I don't want to eat into Joe's time. So, you know, I'll stop there. Thank you, Shamika. Oh, twins. I was going to say, I, I thought <laughs> you were just going to jump right in, Joe. Oh. You, you go, Joe. You want to say something? Go ahead. No. No. Okay. Hi, everybody. Wait. Um, <laughs> I missed it. Okay, you go. What? Who goes? Joe. Yeah. You go. I go. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Joe, and um, I'm here to talk to you about, I guess, my self care. Um, my self care is athletics and sports um as a person with a disability i found out um luckily at a young enough age that uh wheelchair athletics was a great way to uh meet people stay in shape uh get in shape um do some traveling have a lot of fun uh, learn new things, see new things, go to new places. Um, things that when I was a kid growing up with uh, spina bifida, I didn't think I'd be able to do. Um, I always liked sports. always watched, you know, the Jets and the Mets and the Knicks. Um, never really realizing that there is a game out there that I could play. And I went to uh, college and I met actually my first friend with a disability um, when I was in college. And she basically said to me, you know, and okay, so what? You're in a wheelchair, you have a disability. Let's go play some basketball. She put a ball in my hand and that was the end of it. I love the game. I, I realized that a game that I didn't think I'd be able to play because I can't run. I can't jump. Um, I didn't know that people in, in wheelchairs could play this game. And it was a, a great awakening for me. 
Um, it helped me get out of my shell uh, that I was in, you know, when I was younger, my parents kind of put me in that protective bubble, um, not knowing too much themselves. Uh, and, you know, not, no fault of their own. They're just trying to protect me. And uh, when I got to college, I, I did nothing but try and break out of that bubble. Um, and the more people I met, the more games I played, um, the better life became. Um, met lots of great men and women. Uh, was introduced to a lot of great sports. Uh, sports that I'm still playing today. Uh, I started when I was like 18 years old in college. I'm 51. And today I celebrated um, Spina Bifida Awareness Day 2022 uh, on the ice rink playing hockey. Um, it's, it's a great way. Uh, people with disabilities need to do something. You know, being, you know, sitting in a chair or, or you know, braces, walkers, crushes, whatever. Um, we need to move. You know, the body needs to move to be healthy. And sports is an awesome way to do that. And I found it. And through my work with the Henry Viscardi School, um, being a, an adapted phys ed uh, teacher and uh, wheelchair basketball coach, I'm able to impress upon my students how important it is to be able to move and function and play. Um, and it just makes life ha happy, um, I think. Um, if the happier you are, the better life can be. Uh, and then the, the perks and the, the positives are you get to you know, make friends and you get to travel a little bit. You know, a lot of the teams that I happen to play on, we do a lot of travel. You know, with hockey, you know, we'll go up to Canada. We'll go out to Massachusetts. This summer, I played tennis in Orlando and played softball in Chicago. Um, you get to meet a lot of different guys and girls with disabilities, and you get to learn from them also on how they deal with their disability, whether it's spina bifida or something else. And you take the good with the bad and, you know, you try and emulate what you want for your own life. Um, as I got older and into different sports, uh, I, I found other sports. Uh, somebody would approach me and say, hey, let's go play football. Let's play lacrosse. Uh, let's go surfing. Let's go skydiving. Um, when I was a, you know, again, when I was a kid, I, you know, my parents put me in that bubble. And when I was in college, I made a promise to myself that I would try anything and everything. And uh, it just so happens, you know, that I love to play sports. And, and I kind of, you know, right now run my life, you know, being single. I get to run my life by what game I play on each day. Um, you know, I leave school, I coach, and then I go play a game or a sport. And as I get older, I have to be aware that I am getting older and the guys and gals that I'm playing against are probably half my age, quite honestly. So I have to do some, you know, workout things and, um, I found CrossFit and that has helped me stay on the court or on the ice or on the field. And it has helped me kept, keep my spot because a lot of these young kids are coming up and, you know, they want to take my spot, but I'm not ready for, you know, j just to give it to them. You know, I want to fight them and <laughs> keep my spot as long as I can. Um, but it, it, uh, a place like 
the Spina Bifida Association of New York State um, gives me that avenue also to be the advocate for kids in the New York area uh, that are looking for adapted sports, adapted athletics, and a place like the Henry Viscardi School, I'm able to teach my students how important I think it is for athletics and have them play on my teams after they graduate. That's a, that's a really cool feeling. You know, I have a, a bunch of Viscardi alumni that uh, are now my teammates. You know, you know, we had that, you know, student teacher relationship. Now we have that friend teammate relationship. It's a really cool feeling. Joe, um, can I ask you a question? Yes. So you mentioned like CrossFit. Do you ever, yes. when you're trying new sports, do you ever consult a doctor or a specialty um, to check in about how it may affect your body before participating? Yes and no. I mean, it depends on what it is, honestly. Like, you know, for basketball, you know, I know that I got to kind of protect my head a little bit because my shunt's there. Uh, hockey, you know, I got to put a helmet on, especially I, I actually play goalie for hockey. So I definitely have to protect my, my skull. Um, when I was presented the opportunity to go skydiving, I did call my neurosurgeon. You know, I, I was away on a vacation in Florida and my cousin decided that we needed to go skydiving. So I, I asked her to wait, you know, until the morning <laughs> so I can call my neurosurgeon and see if, you know, 13,000 feet up in the air is going to affect my shunt in any way. Uh, he said no. So I did it. You know, if, you know, this is a guy that obviously he put the shunt in my head, he saved my life. I'm going to listen to him. You know, if he said no, it would have been no. But he said, yeah, go for it. And I was presented the opportunity to go scuba diving. You know, that's 100 feet, you know, below the water the opposite way. Again, I called my neurosurgeon. and I said, I got another idea, Doc. What do you think? And he said, yeah, you know what? Just, you know, for scuba, he was, he was pretty cool on the skydiving. He was a little... Uh, trepidatious on the scuba diving. Um, he told me not to go below a hundred feet in the water uh, because then I will have some definite issues. And typically when you're scuba diving, you're not near any, you know, suitable medical facilities. So you want to, you know, do the right thing. And so, and I found out quite easily and quickly that when you're scuba diving, you know, you're in 20, 30 feet of water, that's the best place to be because you know, the light, you know, from the sun still shines through. Um, and that's where all the pretty stuff is. You know, the deeper you go, the darker it is, the colder it is, and the uglier the fish are. <laughs> so if you're in 20 or 30 feet of water, that's prime real estate for a scuba diver. Um, Key takeaway, don't go too deep because the fish just get uglier. There you go. It's not about the shunt, it's about the ugly fish. I have one more question for you. Is it expensive to play as many sports as you do? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, luckily, you know, I, I live on Long Island. Um, Wheelchair Sports Federation is an awesome organization for adapted athletics they themselves are responsible for all the fundraising. So typically I'm on a team, all the fundraising, all the expenses are on the team. Um, quite honestly, you know, wherever it is, whatever it is, um, you know, 15 of us get on a plane to go to Orlando to play tennis. Uh, everything's on the team, you know, um, transportation, 
lodging. You know, typically you you you're responsible for your own meals, um, but usually it's you know on on the team. You know, hockey. You know, coming into hockey season right now, um, we're thinking about you know doing a you know a lot of different trips, um, and it's on the organization itself to fundraise. Uh, so we do that heavily. And then how do you, so we have people from all over the country here. You talked about the World Sports Federation. How do people on this call find their local adaptive sports organizations? Okay. The, you know, on, on a national level, the, the best way would be number one, to go through their SBA chapter. Uh, hopefully they have their own resources. Um, and usually on the local state level government, you know, there is a disabled services department, for lack of a better word. Um, they would be hopefully able to help you. Um, maybe the local rehab hospitals would know um, about things. I know they are th those are places that I know we hit and that we advertise on, you know, for people that are um quite honestly that are newly disabled you know and they want to get back into the world and we find that somebody that has an acquired disability um wheelchair athletics is a great way to get back into the world and uh, and this person's new world as a disabled person so the rehabs the local governments um we're all spina bifida here so you know, your local SBA chapters. Um, and then there's national organization. Every sport has a national organization. You know, the National Wheelchair Basketball Association, the National Wheelchair Softball Association, the USTA for tennis, um, the, you, uh, what is it, the the United Sled Hockey Association, I believe it's called. Um, you could simply Google you know, whatever kind of sport you're interested in, and hopefully a long list of websites would come up in your area. Um, but I do know, you know, in my you know years of experience across the country, you know, wheelchair basketball is played all over. Sled hockey is played all over. Tennis is played all over. Um, another organization that I use is Achilles International, which is for marathons, um, you know, 5Ks, 10Ks, running marathons. Um, you know, so there's a lot. There's a lot. There which is, is awesome. Lot. And yeah. I think... Your point too, like I do work closely with Juanita on a lot of these things and both of us have a long list of resources because both mental and physical wellness is so important and there is a lot online, um, but there is also a lot of specified um, resources for you too, if you do have spina bifida or a disability. So um, mm. I think it's exciting because sometimes it feels like, well, where would I even start? Mm. Plenty of places. Plenty of places. I, I would honestly start with, you know, again, we're all spina bifida here. So your local chapter, um, Google a specific sport and use your local government, you know, whether it's town or state government, you know, they have their own resources, hopefully on their websites. Oh, yeah, quite honestly, I don't care where you are. You can contact me, you know. Julian knows how, and Juanina know, knows how to get to me. Um, give me a call. Send me an email. I'll help you. So, yes, we're all spina bifida here. And, yes, the fish get <laughs> uglier the deeper you go. So, <laughs> Joe, we could come up with, like, a quotes book. Of there you go. It's like, takeaways from Joe on life. You know, Shamika's wrote a book, so maybe it's your turn. There you go. Shamika, can you help me? <laughs> all right. Thank you both so much. I always love hearing about all the different ventures you go into for wellness. And 
I, I find you both to be sort of pioneers in our agency of what it looks like to be involved in physical and mental wellness. So thank you for sharing your personal and professional expertise with us today. Thanks for this no opportunity. Problem. It was great. <laughs>